I'm beginning to believe that the ultimate old man saw was not supposed to happen. Because it seems like every time I get rolling on that project, something kind of steps in the way. And we had a couple of videos on, well, squirrels, where we had to change directions in order to keep some people happy. So, ultimate old man saw, of course, suffered and got put on the back burner. I've been having trouble finding a good crank anyway. I probably should have just bought one new. I probably would have spent less money. I still don't have a good crank. But I spent like 150 on this set of cases. John Thread 2260 cases. If you look at those bearings carefully, both sides, and look at that junk right there. If you've been following my channel for any period of time, you know exactly what it is. But the problem with this crank is the diameter on the PTO side is too small now. It slid right out of that case that you saw in the Crack and Eggs video and slid right into that one. No interference at all. There wasn't a lot of, you know, slop. I didn't see a lot of slop, but that thing has to be an interference fit. It can't be just a slip fit like that. So I'll run this for a little bit. And, but if I leave it, that crank starts rattling in there. It'll pound that bearing right into the case. And I'll ruin the case bearing and crank. So I'm on the lookout for a, for a better crank. How's that? I want to change directions a little bit today and not mess with this stuff right now. So I have this John Thread 2258 that I just want to make sure is up to date with its firmware. I want to pull out common service tool. As I said, check the John Thread. I'll do that first. And then we're going to put this one on it and see if we can get a, a clue based on its operating history on what's going on with this saw, if anything. And then see if we can verify what I suspect on that saw right there. Now, auto tunes. I'm not going to get into the detail. Um, that's really for your Husqvarna dealers to do. But basically what you have is you have a system here where you have an ignition system, a little chip, some smarts, along with a temperature sensor, a throttle position sensor, and this little solenoid operated valve which kind of flutters back and forth opening and closing the fuel supplies of the carburetor. And they all work in concert to make the auto tunes run well. Without getting into painful detail, based on throttle position, there's a couple of situations that that chip is designed to deal with. Idling, and uh, the ones important to me is not idle. Well, I guess it is at some level, but the one at full throttle. And what happens when the saw is perceived to be under load is that system is always trying to tune the saw for maximum performance. And what it does, it does this little lean test. And it does it very frequently. And it takes a very short period of time. And based on what happens with that test, it either decides to add fuel or take it away in order to maximize the RPMs in that particular situation. And I think that's about enough detail. The takeaway from this is the saw when you're loading that saw, when you're operating that saw, and you're giving it throttle, it is always trying to tune itself for maximum performance. It never stops. In a couple of scenarios that auto-tune might deal with, obviously there's going to be manufacturing tolerances, and there's going to be air temperature tolerances, where it gets into that little iteration process and does its little lean test and adds or takes away fuel based on what it sees to get maximum RPM. Well, let's say that saw has a dirty air filter, and then when it's in the throttle position where it's doing that test, it's always trying to get it to the max RPM. It may have to take some fuel away from that system, so that little valve will flutter and stay closed a little bit longer than it normally would, and lean the carburetion out in order to get max power in that given throttle situation. Conversely, let's say it's got an air leak. You know, now there's a little more air than it wants. Same test, it's constantly testing um, in that particular throttle situation, and it decides it has to add fuel in order to get to max RPMs. It'll do that as well. The takeaway, though, as well as testing and tuning and testing and tuning, it never stops when you're working that saw. It leaves a bit of a history on the chip 
and when you go into common service tool and plug in you can read that history and based on what you see there you can get a sense as to what's happened to that saw now I understand that that's an overview and I'm not getting into particulars but if you understand that much about common service tool and that much about auto-tune um, you'll understand that there's an awful lot that you can derive from that from that information so without further ado let me go break out the computer and uh, like I said let's just confirm this guy is okay and if it needs a firmware update let's do it let's see if we get a clue in what's going on with this one and let's see whether or not that one there uh, has some information in its little carburetor that when common service tool plugs in it can download that information and recognize that there's a problem. Let's see if that all happens. I think it's cool stuff. Yes, I did turn out the lights because I didn't finish this. Is while this thing is doing its lean out test and adding or taking away fuel based on what it, it finds and depositing information to be looked at later on with the CST, I want to stress that that's just another source of information that you as a mechanic or whatever looking at that saw has to work with. Common service tool doesn't replace the need for having good mechanical skills. Obviously with the error codes they're going to give you some documentation to point you in certain areas. It doesn't eliminate the need to do things like vac tests and compression tests and all that kind of stuff. It's just another source of information another layer of information that you can use to evaluate the saw and sometimes get you to a solution or a strategy a lot faster than just the conventional strategies alone. Had to sort of slip that in there. So this is just a common service tool. We're going to go through and just see whether or not things are um, working as they should and gives me clues. It doesn't have this big billboard that says, yes, the saw is working as it should. What Common Service Tool does do is it gives you some things that you can work from that give you a clue as to whether the saw is working properly or just, in fact, it tells you a story about how that saw has been running. And the couple of things you look at, well, obviously, you look for error codes, you know. But in the operating history, you look at the last carb settings and that, along with its operating history, where you sort of get an idea on how this saw has been performing and what it's trying to do. The whole concept of auto-tune is kind of interesting. And what happens is you have this little valve in the carburetor, which kind of oscillates back and forth. And it shuts off the fuel for a period of time, and then it opens up and lets fuel in and shuts it off. And when the carburetor is trying to give it more fuel, um, that little valve shuts off for a shorter period of time. And when we get into the operating history, you're going to see numbers that are lower. So, for example, if a, a saw has a hurt top end, it doesn't have good compression, the saw will try to lead itself out, and you'll see that reflected in the carburetor settings, the last ones. Conversely, if it has things like air leaks, it'll try to add fuel. You'll see that reflected in the operating history as well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I, this is all real time. You're going to see this for the first time on this saw, same as I am. Operating history. This is a saw that's running really nicely. 4% of the time it's wide open throttle. Part throttle, 19 to 12,000, 34% of the time, and idles 43% of the time. So this is not a saw that's just sitting around. It's getting used, but it's not getting used hard. At least that's the first impression. Um, it did get to its max RPMs. Someone That's probably me when I was trying to get it to oil. It had some oiling issues. And it's seen a fair range of temperatures. This is what I look at right here. I look at this, this history right here to tell me whether or not it's being beat on or not, and this one's not. And right here, this is the, the last settings of the carburetor. 74 for low, 79 for high. But when you get numbers that are in between 80 in that range, and this is 74, 79, so those are good solid numbers. What that's telling me, you know, just again, it's a clue. It's not saying big billboard 
but what gives me a, a clue is I have no air leaks, obviously, otherwise those numbers would be a lot lower. Um, but also it's healthy compression, things like that, because the numbers aren't trying to lean out to pick up RPMs where it shouldn't be. I guess the message is you can get right into Common Service Tool and you're going to see things like those numbers right there that give you a clue of where the saw is trying to tune itself to, and those are healthy numbers. It had a 16, 30 starts ago, and a 13, and that doesn't bother me either. Let's go see what a 16 is, documents. So it said there was a period of time, but I'm not seeing it reflected in the current settings, that it kind of idled for a higher period of time than it was supposed to. Again, there's nothing in there that's making me nervous, even though I got that code. And so it said, okay, high idling speed or maximum fuel level for idling fuel control is reached. Auto-tune has reached a maximum rich setting. It went full rich, although it's not showing that. And the kind of things that you, you would have, it was mechanical, you know, a leakage in the engine, a, a, a fuel hose. Now, if I saw that happening a lot, you know, well, you know, maybe I might get nervous about it. But it happened one time, 30 starts ago. I'm not going to, I'm not going to really uh, see that as, a, as an issue. But back to operating history. So I see that, right? You still have to be a mechanic and you still have to sort of into this. And then I'm seeing these numbers right here. Now, in order to uh, richen the mixture, the auto-tune would hold that little valve closed for a shorter period of time. This number here is representative of how long it holds the valve closed. So what this is here is this number represents, um, in some unit of time known only to Husqvarna, how long the fuel valve in that carburetor is held closed. So if it's got a, sh a little tiny number, that means it's closed for a very short period of time, which means it's open for a much longer period of time. And I honestly don't know if that's in time units or is it in percentage of, say, revolution or something like that. I don't really know what those numbers are in terms of units, but I do know when they get down to the single digits, that means that fuel valve is remaining open for longer than it's remaining closed. And then when this number gets up into the triple digits, it's remaining closed longer than it's remaining open, therefore leading things out. And again, the, the single digits would be adding more fuel because it stays closed for a very short period of time, meaning it's open for a longer period of time. I don't know if that makes any sense. But when you're getting numbers like this, the current settings, the max and the mins, and the average, but that's, that is right in the sweet spot of what that carburetor is supposed to be. So when I see that one error code saying it ran lean, 13 by the way, it's also a lean code. Both of those are lean codes. What that means is one time, 30 starts ago, in the life of this saw, there was a lean condition. That could have happened for a whole variety of reasons, none of them necessarily a mechanical problem. And I don't think there is, so I'm just going to ignore that. But like I said, it's not been used hard, and it hasn't sat there and idled, which is terrible in saws. It's actually been used pretty steadily, but at not full throttle, just probably limited in smaller trees, you might guess. There was a time when this carburetor had a setting of minus 9 degrees centigrade, and I have a feeling that when it did that, that's when we got that lean condition. For so yet again, while the common service tool doesn't have this big banner, you're healthy, what it does do is tell you through these numbers what the carburetor thinks it needs to have right now, and if I had a mechanical problem, that would show up right there immediately, along with the error codes. That along with the history of use, as a mechanic, you have to sort of intuit with that information, plus what you're seeing on the saw, you know? You can't ignore the things like VAC tests, checking for spark and that type of stuff, and just how it runs. It's all that data combined that you sort of process to come up with a conclusion. And my conclusion is, this is a very healthy saw right now. Nice to see. What I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do a master reset um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset the temperature and the recent history. Okay. That's it. I'm going to leave it at that because I will track this all over a period of time, you know. And it's been run for eight hours. It's had 123 starts. Um, most recent fuel setting adjustment was two starts ago. That was when it came in the garage. I guess I ran it for 11 minutes, one second, trying to get it to oil the way I wanted it to oil. That's, that's probably correct. So let's do some other things while we're here. Let's just do all the test. Basically, this is going to be that very simple test. Um, the fuel valve, do you hear it clicking? That's that little valve I was talking about, opening and closing. And if you hear it, it's probably good. Yes. All right, what do we have for the ignition module? It says 579 which is this one right here. And it also says that I have the firmware version 1.08 and there's a current version. So let's update it. Now what it's going to do, it's going to basically overwrite the firmware ver version that's on that saw with this new version. Okay. So we're updating from 1.0.8 to 1.0.10, so two, two updates. It's actually worth doing this. By the way, this would be identical on a 555 as well. I've got a 555 I should probably pull out and, and do this too. But this one here is a CS, like I said, the 2258, which is identical. You know, and the thing is, they learn about their saws, and they actually tweak that timing uh, fuel curve mixture to make them run a little bit better over time. They've they've developed it, developed it, developed it. In uh, so when you get a chance to have a dealer do a, a firmware update, it's usually worth doing. That's it. Product is up to date. So that saw has now gone through a firmware update. Now, while I'm here, eh, I can do it another time. We'll just deal with this at another point in time. I have an uh, early edition 555 that's never had an update, but runs perfectly. So it's not, it's not that it won't run if it doesn't have the updated software. But especially with the 550 series and some of the 562s, they've made, uh, they've made improvements that are noticeable with their firmware updates. The 555 and the 2258, I don't know what it is about them. Maybe it's because they don't have stuff for cranks. But they just simply don't seem to have as many issues and haven't had as many issues over time. So this saw has now updated. And like I said, uh, it, it just basically seemed like it was fine. Bob likes to do a master reset, just start from scratch. I, I'm not sure I see the necessity and all that. So, anyway, I figured it might be interesting to somebody. Have to tell you, common service tool is something that the dealers have, and it's, a, it's, it's something they bring to the table, and most dealers are pretty good about it. For like 25 bucks, they'll sit there and update your saw. And it's absolutely worth doing from time to time. You know, you build a relationship with your dealer. They start tracking your saw. And like each one of the saws I've got in there, I've got a bunch of them in there. When I jump into that saw, I can get back over on the documentation and logbook here. Actually, the logbook right here. And I don't, I'm not doing it on this saw, but I build sort of a running um, log of what I've seen on the saw over time. 
and it helps me service that saw, you know. Good to do, uh, a good reason to stay in contact with your dealer, but also it's a good thing for the dealers to actually promote to stay in contact with their customers, especially with the, with the auto-tunes. And I can't tell you how many guys got all frustrated with some of the early auto-tunes, and the answer to the problem was get back to the dealer and get a firmware update, you know. But there was a lot of dealers that didn't understand that either. So there was this like miscommunication between both customer and dealer that didn't help the brand and didn't help the customer and didn't help the dealer. And uh, this is a very, very valuable tool. I wish more people would dive into it. Husqvarna has been going around putting on uh, classes. I happen to be fortunate enough to go to one. And it's an introductory class. The guys have used the common service tool for a while. Um, some of them might be uh, get their their intelligence insulted because they already know what the instructor is trying to tell them. Well, the, the, the reason they're doing the course is to introduce people to the common service tools so they can start the dialogue online. It really wasn't set up as much for the experienced user as it was for the dealers who, you know, they've been turning wrenches and screwdrivers, but they're not used to this kind of thing and help them at least get into the system and start learning what it brings to the table, but more importantly, learn how to communicate with them and customer support so they can do a better job of supporting saws. You know, and that, that elusive better job of supporting saws actually ends up, uh, I believe, helping on the bottom line because I can jump into this w along with what I see visually and very quickly either confirm what I suspect or it'll tell me to go a different direction, possibly save me a lot of money. Now, I understand that a VAC test does the same thing, but what I find is this will tell me if I need to do a VAC test based on what I see on the on the engine fuel settings you know it gets you there very quickly so I might say you know something it might be low in compression or it might have a leak you know those kind of things and what I see on the on the fuel settings along with the operating history either supports again you have to take the sum total of the data but either supports that next step of doing a VAC test or says don't waste your time it's something completely different so from that perspective it actually can save you money as well just a lot of benefits to getting involved with this common service tool. And every year it seems like Husqvarna is, is making the, the process easier and better. And um, it's not just the software updates or firmware updates that are of value, but they've actually revamped the common service tool from the original AutoTune um, uh, software package they had. This is a, a definitely an update. And I suspect they'll update it again over time as they add more features, functions, and models that have more features and functions. But something to stay on, I think. I think it's an exciting part of the, of the service side of this thing. You know, just a humble opinion. So I'm going to shut this one off. Talk to you later. Bye for now. And again, I guess I want to just kind of go through this particular saw in um, hit on that theme is common service tool gives you some pretty interesting stuff to look at yeah when you go into the operating history menu you've got the actual history which is really stored information and then of interest to a lot of people is error codes so this thing here since it's got the new carburetor on it had a lean condition one time 188 starts ago so i'm not gonna worry about it and that's what I'm talking about, about clues. Let's see what else we can find. The current low, 59, and that's right where it should be. The current high is beginning to lean out a little bit. It's in the 80s. That's kind of like at the upper level of where you want to see it. You know, if it gets more than that, that means the saw has got something going on where the carburetor is trying to lean it out in order to get the RPMs. The average high is creeping up there. The max high was 94, that's too much. And the average is 75. So as compared to what we saw on the, on the 2258, this saw might have something going on. It could be as simple as a dirty air filter and it's trying to lean it out so it can run with a dirty air filter, which is probably what happened. Also, this one here idles a lot. And when it does get run, it doesn't get run flat out often. Again, since it's had that new carburetor on it, it hasn't been hammered. 
So I think I'm, you know, even though this was originally a 2012 version, my guess is I'm going to find that it's probably pretty healthy, you know, not a lot going on with it. Um, on the mechanical side, it might be a little down in compression, things like that. But what that tells you, when you start seeing the numbers start creeping up a little bit in the high side, you know, the max high, like I said, it could be as simple as an air filter, but that would prompt me to start looking for other things. If I saw those numbers uh, 10 points further up, I'd definitely, but that max high of 94, it began to try to lean itself out, and sometimes the saw will try to lean itself out when it's down on compression or have, has other issues. And being a 2012 version, chances are uh, it's getting, you know, a little soft. It's getting a little old. See, this was manufactured 2012. Right? So let's see what you have for firmware. And again, I don't know what it has. Let's see what it has for uh, an ignition module. This one says it has a 581617001A. I don't see an A, but I do see this one right here, which is close. 58161. The one number I'm looking at is that one right on the top. So let's select that one. And it has a fairly old firmware version, the 1.0.18, and the current version is 1.0.5. So that saw is definitely better to update than not. Okay. But while it's doing that, again, the common service tool doesn't have this big banner out there saying, hey, this is what's wrong with the saw. But you've got to be a mechanic. And it's just like when you fire it up and you listen to it and maybe it comes down idle a little bit too slow or it doesn't have the throttle response you think it should have or it's down on power. You as a mechanic or operator, you sort of have a feel for your machine and you sort of intuit the kind of things that might be going wrong with it based on what you see and feel. And what Common Service Tool does is it adds another layer of information to either confirm or deny what you think you have with your saw that you've deduced by instinct. And I think that's very valuable. And as I said before, one of the most important pieces of information is just simply what the carburetor um, is set at now, what it thinks it needs now. See, this one's an EL46 carburetor. It's possible that this one here has the original carburetor. It's one of the earlier versions and I'm, so I might be wrong. The reason why I thought it had a, uh, an update is I thought the 2012s you had to connect just with that white connector right there. And this one has got the fast connect. I guess I don't really know when they made that change. So it's possible that this saw just simply has only had 39 hours. <laughs> 715 starts. Possible. Doubt it. I think that carburetor's been updated. I think those first generation ones came with the EL44s. And maybe it was a dealer had a problem with it and, and then at the time gave it the update EL46. That's possible too. I don't know the history of the saw. I have no idea what the history is. But what I do know is what the carburetor is telling me and what I'm seeing on the current settings is it should run fine, but because I'm seeing the higher numbers in here, the current high at 80 and the max high at 94, um, for whatever reason, the saw is trying to lean itself out some. And there's a variety of reasons why it could do that. One, it's a really hot day, you know? Air is very hot and therefore not very dense. So I'll have to lean itself out some to compensate. Dirty air filter. You know, can't get as much air in. So now the carburetor tries to lean itself out to, to compensate for that. And the other issues that are more significant would be things like dropping compression and, uh, uh, well, mechanical related to that type of thing where in order to get the RPMs, um, the saw will attempt to lean itself out. And I know that exacerbates a bad situation sometimes, you know. 
but that's what it'll try to do. Conversely, if it had a massive air leak or even problem um, trying to pick up fuel, something in the fuel system, carburetor seals and things like that, where you get more air, it'll attempt to fatten itself up and that number down there would be dropping, not raising if it was trying to add more fuel. Again, those numbers are defining in their units, whatever their units might be, how long the little valve in the carburetor stays closed. So the longer that valve stays closed, the higher the number, the more that valve stays open, which means the shorter time that valve stays closed, that means it's adding more fuel and those numbers will go down. And that's something that may not be intuitive because most people think more numbers means more fuel and it's exactly the opposite on this engine settings. Net, 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 the current low around 59, I, you know, that to me is, is, it's idling healthy, which means it probably is sealing up pretty good. Cases are probably fine. Just again, since I don't have any evidence to prove otherwise, and it's not giving any symptoms from what I understand on how it runs of air leak, as we discussed before, you know, you collect your physical data and then add that to what you see in common service tool. And I'm right now, I'm not really worried about anything. My impression is it might be a little tired possibly, but it might have just simply needed a, an air filter. So we're going to go with that until something tells me different. I guess the kind of decisions that this will also help you make is at this point in time, I don't see anything there that says I got to do a vac test on this saw. You know what I'm saying? Might do a compression test, but not a vac test. So it's those kinds of decisions, yet again, compiled with what you physically see on the saw with this. This can help you either confirm or deny your instincts. And uh, if you're on the fence of which way to go investing time into the saw, this can actually help you uh, make your decision to go forward. Um, one thing I want to point out is on the resets, you've got the master reset, of course, it sets all kinds of things. I don't know if I picked that up on video or not, but I don't know if you noticed this one here, I hit the reset, the master reset, and of course it clears the history. The other thing it did was set the carburetor settings to the default 75 setting, right? So you're going to say, well, how come you didn't do that on the 2258 from Johnsford that you just had on the very same system? Well, you had the opportunity. And it's just me. Um, the 2258 was running just fine. It's been in service the last couple of days. That's where it wanted to be. So I don't really see a reason to change that. Let it go back to, into service and let it tune its way to where it wants to be. Find its, own, its, find its new happy. Where this saw here is going to get torn down and rebuilt. So, setting the carburetor to the defaults would be something I would do anyway when the saw gets back together. And since I have it plugged in right now, I just decide to flush the history and reset the carburetor because it's going to be effectively a different saw when it goes back together. And I don't have this thing hooked up all the time. So when I have it hooked up and I'm doing stuff like that, and this happens to be a project that's coming down the pike this next week or so, it was a target of opportunity. But yet again, um, when the saw is running fine, you know, it's in service. The service, the way it's been running is how it tuned itself to that particular operator doing those particular jobs. And the numbers are right in, kind of in the sweet spot anyway. I don't really see the sense in changing that, you know, by setting it to defaults. I don't know what I buy. Um, if it's within a few points of, of default, just leave it, you know. And to those people who are saying, how come you're doing this? How come you're showing common service tool? And is that a benefit to the Husqvarna community? Well, the audience and the reason I'm doing this comes into a couple of parts. One, because I think it's a really cool tool, all right? But that doesn't help anybody but me. Two, I want people who are involved with these auto tunes to understand what their dealer brings to the table and why it makes sense to go back and visit them from time to time and spend 25 bucks or whatever they charge for sit there on the bench and have them flash the carburetor with the updated firmware and three the dealers because I know some of you out there watch this and I know while I work for a couple of dealers I'm not one of these big power dealers that 
has a lot of say. But having someone in the shop or yourself learning this is a very valuable thing. It can save you a lot of money, but also help you with the relationship with the customers. And these auto tunes, you know, you can argue they had a kind of a rocky start. You can also argue that part of the reason that they had a rocky start was neither the customer nor the dealers really understood the technology. And I think this stuff, I think this is very valuable for the dealer to bring to the table. And uh, I know I'm going to get a little heat because who am I to say that? But uh, me as a customer, if I didn't have this, once I understood what was available to the dealer, yeah, you'd see me once a year, you know, that old concept of bring your saw in for a tune-up and a clean. Well, being able to get a firmware update uh, adds another piece to the puzzle that makes it a lot more valuable than, you know, some of the old just sit there and rev it on a tack and tweak the high speed a little bit, you know, because that's static. This is real time. It tells you a lot about the saw. And plus the information that you're getting a sense of the history, you can communicate with the customer about, hey, you know something? I'm seeing those numbers rise. You might want to change your air filter, things like that. And you're doing it based on data, you know? It's not just speculation. So I just, I just see this valuable for all people involved. While we're having a common service tool party, I've got one more saw. This one's been on loan. I honestly don't know how much it's been run. You know, when someone has an issue and they need a saw while I'm, rep while I'm repairing their saw, they get that one. So I'm going to hook it up and let's see what we got on that saw because it kind of scares me. This one here is the very last saw I have that does not have a base gasket. It says there's a firmware update available on this saw. It doesn't have the manufacturing date because this is a EL48 that was put on sort of a, a replacement bottom end. Well, it's had nine hours of running on it. The current low is 10 and the current high is 90. The minimum high is 64, the max has been 98. So this saw is trying to lean itself out. Now, it was operated in very cold weather. And 90 is kind of a flag to me as well. This saw sounds like it's got some uh, potential issues. But see, there's two numbers there that bother me. First is that number 10. That points to having a little bit of an air leak somewhere. You know, when I get it down in that number on the low side to idle. And if you've ever listened to this saw and a lot like this one, you hear it kind of go, hmm, on idle, where it goes a little high, then drops down. And almost every one of those saws is going to have a 13 or a 16 or an error code. Well, this has got a, a bunch of them. See that? It's got 13 code 47 times. And it has it every time. So what we're looking at with this one is there's an air leak. And it would not surprise me if it's the, the having not having a base gasket. The saw really needs to be taken apart. And it really needs to be trimmed down with the lathe like I do all the other ones. The interesting thing here is even though it has that issue, right? Even though it has that issue, it runs fine. And it hasn't gotten to the end on the high speed. It hasn't gotten to the end of what it can do. It can go more than that to, to fatten it up, to take into account the fact that it does have an air leak. And this, this saw gets run hard. <laughs> so you remember most of the other ones we've seen to this point in time, they, they have like 2 or 3% at full throttle. This one here, 25% of the time it's run is full throttle. 15 plus 10. And a lot of time it gets bogged down in there. See it? 6 to 12,000. Even though it's full throttle, it's being wedged. Jeez, I wonder who that might be in uh, the part throttle stuff. Yeah, sometimes. And it idles half the time. So this is a saw that gets run and run hard. And you can see that because of the larger percentage of runtime up here. And we also see that we've got some issues. You know, it's trying 
to lean itself out on the high side and the other issue is conversely at the low side it's trying to richen it up at low speed so it's got something going on and uh, you know my first instinct was oh Jesus because you modded it it's got the higher compression and all that kind of stuff no most of the saws that I've done the modifications that I do uh, they they sit right in the sweet spot just like a stock saw you know they don't change that so this is a saw that needs to come apart at some point in time we'll do a project and uh, see what's going on yep I hear the valve it's cold out you see how it's dropping this one came out of the truck it's about freezing so yeah that's about right Now it's happy. You know, and the other thing you got to consider on these things here is just because I'm getting all this information about mixture, it could be a carburetor. It's still a carburetor. It could have water in the fuel. It's been sitting. There's a lot of things that are just very simple that those issues can point to. Now, when you have that many, 47 times, basically every time it starts it's showing that 13 code that's when you start seeing that this is a systemic issue same with the 16 it's getting worse you know so it's showing an air leak type of a code every time it starts not a few times every time and that's where you go to the next step. That means, okay, let's do a fact test. Let's see, in fact, if it is an air leak or uh, is it something else that's creating that problem, you know? But that's the kind of decision that you can make based on just the way the saw runs. I mean, it does have that kind of little overrun before it drops the idle. It doesn't seem to hurt it, but it has it. But it also, combined with what you're seeing in Common Service Tool, this is a saw that needs a vac test. See what I'm saying? You still got to be a mechanic. It doesn't have this big banner saying put a vac test on it. But when you sort of compile all that information together, just in five minutes I figured out this thing needs a vac test. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, that's the message of the story. I figured I'd find one that I could put on here. It would give you something to work with, you know.